<laughs> oh, it just leaves that Moto Marini for dead. <laughs> oh, this is really, <laughs> it's really soft. Yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Ian. And I am Brandon. And you are watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And if you're new here and you like this kind of content, I hope you will consider subscribing. So the big question in today's comparison here is, is this KTM 890 Adventure R worth twice the price of that Moto Marini X-Cape 649? No. <laughs> So here's how we're gonna kind of do this video today. Uh, we're gonna talk about, we're gonna go through the specs and talk about how these bikes differ in terms of specs and features. Uh, we're also gonna cut to our riding impressions. So we took these bikes on an on and off-road test loop yesterday, and we're gonna cut to that and show you our kind of thoughts uh, riding the bikes on and off-road. So we'll, we'll cut through with that footage as well. And then at the end of the video, we're gonna wrap up by talking about sort of, is the KTM ultimately worth uh, twice the price uh, of the Moto Marini. All right, so let's start going through the specs of the bike. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover the KTM and Brandon's gonna cover the Moto Marini there. So price, what is the price of the Moto Marini XK? The Moto Marini is an absolute steal at 8,299 US today. Okay, so 8,300 bucks for that. Uh, this motorcycle with the tech pack, which most everyone gets because of cruise control and stuff like that, is about $16,000. So <laughs> it happens to be just about exactly double of the Moto Marini. So I guess you win on price. <laughs> um, what is, oh, this is, this is a good one though. I'm gonna win on this one. The weight, what is the weight of your bike? 280 pounds. No, it's, no, it's not 280 pounds. What's the weight? 520. 520 pounds. I'll put the kilograms here below, but it's, it's like 235 kilos, I think. My bike is a Svelte, 470 pounds. I'll put the kilograms of that below. So this is, I mean, truthfully, this is 50 pounds lighter and, and that is a big difference. All right, we're starting up to go out for the ride. So why don't you fire up the Versus and see how she, I mean, sorry, the, uh, the X-Cape and see how she starts up. You don't have to wait for the screen. I'm captivated by the screen. The, the graphic. The KTM. Ready to race. Kind of sounds like the valves have all shaped and loose on the KTM. First ride impressions of the Moto Marini Xscape. We are leaving the house. Um, I would first say it sounds a lot like a Versus 650, feels a lot like a Versus 650. Uh, the clutch pull, the let out is a little bit late. We shall see. Yeah, so cruising down the highway on the KTM, uh, you sit up high on the bike, like you sit up on top of it. You don't really sit down inside of it like the Moto Marini. Uh, there's a lot of wind buffeting from this windshield. Even with the visor that I've got on here, there's just a lot of wind noise and vibration on my uh, Climb Cryos helmet. Other things you notice, I mean, the bike has a ton of power. I really like the dashboard, even though it's not as big as the Moto Marini. Um, the electronics are good because I've got cruise control so I can that's one thing he doesn't have back there on the Marini is cruise control um, it's more of a premium feature on the higher-end bikes but when you're traveling it's just so nice to be able to set your speed and and utilize that cruise control but really just cruising down the highway at 60 or 70 miles an hour or around 100 to 120 kilometers an hour Honestly, you'd really be just as good, just as well off on the Mona Marini. It might actually be a little bit smoother and quieter uh, on that bike because this is more of an off-road, you know, focused bike. You're compromising some of that on-road comfort to get the off-road performance, you know. Everything's always a compromise. Tools, break out your tools and fix it. An ape can't figure out how to screw a mirror in. Cool. 
It's reverse. Oh, no. Because this is loose, but this is a reverse thread on this part, and this is a normal thread, so you have to cross tighten it. You need two wrenches to hold it. So this is why I always carry tools even on a local ride because I've got Moscow Moto Tool Roll, by the way, sponsor content. <laughs> Let's talk about warranty. So I think you're gonna beat me here on this. So what is the warranty on that? Three years, unlimited miles, unlimited miles. So you could put 100,000 miles on. I'll put 200,000. 200,000 miles on in three years and you'd still be under warranty. Unfortunately, the 890 Adventure R only has a one year warranty. So if something breaks after 13 months, you're on your own. And it will break. <laughs> ah, power. Let's talk power, all right? How much power are you packing under the hood? I have a massive 61 horsepower. That's it? Is that a single cylinder? Is that a bicycle? <laughs> I mean, I thought it was a motorcycle. This is... Why does it have a, so little power? This is a performance machine, 61 horsepower. How much torques? I got lots of torques too, 40 huh. pound feet. I think a KLR makes more torque than that. <laughs> um, I have 105 horsepower and 73 foot pounds of torque. What do you need so that I for? So like, I have like almost double the power and it's 50 pounds less. Well, what do you need all that for? Performance. You just get a ticket. I you lose just your license. Accelerate all I want. Initial thoughts on power delivery. Again, I keep finding myself coming back to the Kawasaki Versus 650. This feels like a Versus motor. Um, that to say, it's, it's perfectly adequate for what this bike is and what it's meant to do. I find the torque delivery a little bit soft. Um, these bikes require you to rev them out a little bit to get going with any sense of speed. But it's perfectly acceptable, it's smooth enough, doesn't sound particularly inspiring, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it does. I'm, I'm guessing it's a pretty fuel efficient motor too. I think that's really worth mentioning is that on the 890, and this is the case with a lot of modern adventure bikes, I feel, is they put a lot of heat on your legs. So my legs right now, like from my knees kind of down to my feet, they feel pretty hot. It's about 85 degree Fahrenheit right now, so it's a fairly warm day. Um, and I'm already kind of feeling that engine heat. The engine heat on the Moto Marini, I think because it's a smaller engine producing a lot less power, it just doesn't seem to produce the heat off the engine and the radiator and the exhaust that this bike does. So that's another thing to keep in mind, you know, the more powerful engine you have, potentially you might be creating more engine heat, which could affect you uh, on your ride. Wind noise is a, is a little high on it, but the wind management's okay and that it's not buffeting me around a, a great deal. Um, let's see, if I drop down a couple gears here, it's, it's okay, but there's just not a lot of power to it. It's not gonna set your heart ablaze, that's for sure. Get a couple of things out of the way about what this bike maybe is and what it isn't. Um, it's definitely not a super premium bike, uh, but it is nice to see stainless steel braided brake line. Uh, the TFT display is is reasonably nice. It's a good size, um, but we don't have cruise control here. We don't have a bunch of ride modes, traction control settings. But also, the price point is quite nice. And looking at maybe some other choices that you have here in this $8,000, $8,500 price range, you know, CB500X, Kawasaki KLR650, um, you know, a Yamaha Tenere 700, that's a bit more. Um, I think this bike starts to stack up really well there. All right, let's talk about some of the features that we do or do not have. So I'll start with the KTM uh, features, my electronics. I have rally mode, I have nine level traction control. I have an IMU with cornering ABS and cornering traction control. I have cruise control. I have MSR motor slip regulation. Um, I've got, uh, let's see, I've got a TFT uh, that has in information on it. Um, what else, what other features do I have? A lot, a lot of good features. What about you? You have tubeless spoked rims. That I have leak. tubeless spoked wheels. Well, they don't hold air, but that's 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 just disregard that. Well, I have ABS. 
ABS, yeah, that's the only right. feature you have. Uh, I, I have a TFT and mine is bigger and we know that matters. So size matters on a TFT. Yep. You have a bigger TFT, but it doesn't have anything TFT. on it really. Well, it doesn't have anything to display. I have, all, all I, have a... I have road mode and I have off-road mode. Which off-road mode? How does that off-road mode work for you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll see how that goes. Um, do you have traction control? Yeah, it's right here in my throttle. Your wrist. Okay. Yeah. Do you have cruise control? Uh, in my wrist. Do you have an IMU six-axis IMU? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> All right. So features, uh, you know, the KTM does have that. Let's talk about suspension. Um, on your Moto Marini there, what is your suspension specs, your travel and your adjustments and things like that? Well, sir, the front fork on this bike is fully adjustable and I have 160 millimeters of travel. 160. My mountain bike has 160 mils of travel. <sighs> Literally, my mountain bike has that. Okay, so go on. My rear suspension. I have a, uh, I have a uh, rebound adjustability. Rebound. And what about preload? Preload adjustability. But it's a, but it's a call. It's a screw adjust preload. So you can't do it. You have to take the shock out of the bike. Well, but I have 140 millimeters of rear travel. 140. Just for reference, my mountain bike has 150 millimeters of travel. So not much travel, but that's okay. Cause you have a lower seat height. And I think that's on here somewhere. Did we put seat height on the specs? No. Okay, well, the person who wrote this forgot. But the <clears> seat height is uh, like, what, 33 inches, I think, on that? And this is like 34 and three quarters. Which is funny, because that doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a very noticeable difference getting on and off these bikes. So, you know, if you're shorter of leg stature, that might matter to you. Yeah, we did notice there's a huge difference. That feels so much lower and easier to get on and off than this. Um, Okay, suspension, going back to that, I have 240 millimeter front and rear travel, fully adjustable, WP Explorer, super high end suspension, which means I can ride fast off road and I don't bottom out. Can you do that? It just depends on how fast I go. It depends. But that is a good point. I mean, it's a third more travel, let's be honest. Yeah, it's a huge difference. Um, ground clearance, what's your ground clearance? My ground clearance is a massive 6.8 inches. Okay, my wife's car has more than that. Um, mine is 10.4 inches, almost dirt bike-like ground clearance. So if I go over rocks and ruts and logs and debris on the trail. What do you trail, need to go over debris for? I could run and over, ruts I could, and logs. I could run so over what, that bike that? and not even bottom out. So I have a lot more there. All right, so you've been on the uh, Xscape for the first, uh, what, hour or so of the ride. What, what are your thoughts on this bike so far? So if I didn't know otherwise, I would swear I was riding a Kawasaki Versus 650 LT. Um, it, it's it's very strange. Uh, my wife owns a 650 LT. I've spent a lot of time on this bike. Uh, this feels so much like that. A little better brakes, uh, but the riding position feels extremely similar. You've got this kind of dish down thing. Some people might like that, some not. Uh, the tank feels real tall in front of you, just like on a Versus. The handlebar position, the mirrors, everything, the way the motor delivers its power. It's a little bit soft on torque off the line, but feels just like that bike, but I'd argue in a package that looks a lot better. What do you think of like the dash and the windshield and TFT and all this kind of stuff? So the TFT on it is a nice size. I think it looks a little basic. It would be nice if they could do a couple more things with it, maybe add some functionalities into it. The windscreen's relatively easy to adjust while on the fly um, but i might prefer a little bit different windshield it's a bit noisy yeah but it doesn't move your head around well, wait a lot, till you ride that nice. piece of junk that pile <laughs> that thing's so noisy <laughs> well we'll we'll see because i haven't tried the new 890 yet it's even worse than the other one than the old one but yeah this is just a very easy motorcycle to ride yeah it's I, easy I, it's... I think just about anybody could get on this and feel comfortable it's you know it's it's not too tall it doesn't feel too heavy. The handling's nice and neutral. The riding position has that nice upright adventure bike feel to it. So nothing offensive, but it's just very so far middle of the road to me. Okay, so now we're gonna switch off. I'm gonna jump on the, the Xscape and he's gonna jump on the 890 and we're gonna just take impressions after switching bikes. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!
Come on! <laughs> no, there's there's no way this this little guy's gonna keep up with the 890. That's 105 horsepower versus about 60 horsepower here, and this is 50 pounds. This is 50 pounds heavier, like 20, 25 kilograms heavier than that, which is kind of hard to believe. I don't know where the, all the extra weight is, but honestly, so jumping on this um, after that, the, the engine on this is actually smoother. The whole bike feels smoother and just softer and kind of more cushy and just more like a Cadillac feeling. The wind protection's a lot better on this because the windshield's so much higher. You don't get the buffeting. It's much quieter. Um, I prefer the dashboard on this is also way bigger So it just goes to show you, you know, sometimes you pay more and in some ways you get less and if you depending on how you look at it um, This this bike doesn't have a lot of power But it has it has enough to be satisfying and enough to move along um, I don't know. I really like this This Moto Marini quite a bit when we get to the off-road section, that's really going to be the test where the KTM is obviously just going to completely just run away from this bike in every single in every single measure. But on the highway, you know, it's really not quite as clear cut as that. Okay, we've just switched off bikes. I am on the new KTM 890 Adventure R. Feels quite familiar to me since my personal bike is a 790R. A lot taller, a lot taller than the Moto Marini, that's for darn sure. The TFT is a bit smaller. Oh, it just leaves that Moto Marini for dead. It's a good thing we're doing this in Mexico. And back on the KTM, it's really nice to have a quick shifter again. This just feels like another world of, of sportiness. I kind of feel like the Moto Marini with its looks is writing checks that the riding experience can't catch. This just is immediately a lot more engaging of a bike. The 890 has a lot more low-end and mid-range torque. Um, the X-Cape, you really have to rev it out. It only starts to get okay at about 7,000 RPM. But for your average rider doing a lot of commuting or, or just two-lane touring, riding on the freeway, it is perfectly acceptable. So I know Ian may disagree on this, but I think the KTM's wind noise is about the same. Neither of these bikes are very smooth or quiet with the wind management. This bike doesn't have any torque really. So you really, if you want to accelerate, you really got to spin the engine up. Jeez, that thing's fast. See the Moto Marini, this this will get moving, but you have to be willing to to drive the engine all the way to redline. You know, this is probably going to piss some people off to say this, but. How fast you can go on roads like this usually is not about the bike you're riding, it's about the skill you have as a rider. I've gone to things like the Yamaha Champ School and things like that, and not to sound egotistical, but I'm pretty sure that I could ride faster than him on this road, even being on this bike with like half the horsepower, because I know how to ride a bike towards its limits. And I know how to trail brake and things like that, so it's not always about having the most impressive bike. See, I'm running away from him now because I'm confident in driving the bike more towards his limits than he is. And Brandon's a very decent rider. He just hasn't had the professional training that I... Ooh, 
that I've gone through. See, there's no slip or clutch, so I locked up my rear wheel there on a downshift. It's my own fault. It's just perfectly my own fault. Uh, country, where is your motorcycle made, sir? Well, sir, like most everything else today in the, this age, it is made in China. But it doesn't look like it's made in China. Can you tell us more about that? So this motorcycle was actually uh, of an Italian design. Where was yours designed? Uh, well, they were blind <laughs> because they don't... <laughs> um, Austria, so mine is uh, made in Austria, although KTM does have a partnership with CF Moto, uh, and they are doing a lot with the Chinese companies, although this bike, this 890, is actually an Austrian bike, um, country of origin, you can see on the sticker. So yeah, that's interesting because it's designed by Italians, developed by Italians, but built by uh, Zhongsheng, uh, I think, uh, or Zhongneng uh, Vehicle Group in, in China, who owns that brand now. But the motor is a CF Moto. But mm. that CF Moto motor is a Versus 650 motor. So, which there, is an interesting point that we'll get to. That's clear as mud. I mean, brakes. How about brakes? Brakes. I have big brakes. Uh, dual. Uh, I have I have J1 uh, calipers and uh, big rotors and uh, ABS and all of that. Four pistons. What do you have? Yeah. You have Brembos, I, don't you? I, I have Brembos. Real I, Brembos. I'd rather have the Brembos, honestly. And speaking of the brakes, I'd rather have the wheel design of that bike because on that bike, the spokes have a, a, they have a different lip on the spoke. And so you don't need a, a rim strip to seal the tire for tubeless. On the 890, they always leak because the rim strip goes bad. So actually that's a better wheel design than this bike. I have to admit that. And you have, you have nicer braking components. That's kind of interesting. Though I do prefer the brake feel on that bike better. Well, this has stronger brakes. I think maybe those are only two piston, I'm not sure. Um, you also have Marzacci forks, which is kind of cool. What else? Uh, okay, dealer network. How many Moto Marini dealers are currently in the USA right now? As of today, in early August 2023, there are 30 dealers in the US. 30, that's 30. it. 30. There are almost 400 KTM dealers in the US right now. And they probably need double that because you'll need it. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's probably true, uh, but, but that, that's a real thing though. The dealer networks, like Honda has a thousand dealerships, KTM has almost 400, Suzuki I think has like 500. Motor Marini is just getting started here in the US, they only have 30 dealers, so traveling, getting, I mean, you could get parts shipped and, and things like that, um, but you know, that's a big consideration. So they're starting out, but they're growing, they're yeah. growing, they're growing fast. That's a reasonable number for just having started out, we'll get there. Uh, what is your service interval for your v major service for your valve inspection? A full 26,000 miles. 26,000 miles. Mine is 16,000 miles. Uh, we'll see if the KTM motor even makes it to there. But um, yeah, so, so that's good though. You have a longer maintenance interval. Oil changes are probably similar on both, you know, but uh, the, the, the expensive service is the valves and that's longer. Though on you're that. not going to have the amount of filters to deal with on this. Yeah, that will be easier because it's an automotive type filter, isn't it? Yeah. And this, this has a cartridges and oil screens and everything like that. Starting off down the trail here, I like to put my windshield down when I have an adjustable windshield just because when I start to stand up and ride over the front of the bike, the windshield gets awfully close to my helmet. So we'll do that. So I've obviously ridden this bike off-road before. Um, now why is that rear ABS still on? That's weird. I'm gonna have to figure that out. We're starting dirt. I am on the KTM. I'm likely gonna hang back here a bit so I don't get dusted out. Ian is a much faster rider than me off-road. I love that multi-level traction control. You can just grab fistfuls of throttle and it figures it out. I think he's trying to figure out how to uncork all 61 horsepower there. It's pretty cushy and soft ride. You know, for how little suspension travel it has, it actually rides pretty well off-road. The only caveat there, and it's a big caveat, is 
you have to ride slow. If you try to ride aggressively at all, you, you just immediately overtax the suspension and the chassis. You start having bottoming out and a lot of issues like that. So it's just, it's a good bike for off-road cruising and just dirt roads and gravel roads. And for people who just ride at a more mellow pace, it's great for that. You know, compared to like a Versus or something, you've got the 19 inch front wheel. You've got pretty good forks on the front with some good adjustments. So for just tootling along like this, you know, it's really actually quite, quite good. Um, when a trail starts to get sandy, I mean, that's, yeah, that's, you know, that's when tires come into play and riding, riding ability, riding style, things like that. Yeah, this, this doesn't feel too good in the sand. If I stand up and use better body position, that's going to help. I always find the 19 inch front wheel bikes just don't do as well in the sand. Also, this is like a 25 degree suspension rake, which is kind of um, steep, a little bit too steep for dirt because it makes the handling a little more twitchy, especially when you get into sand and stuff like that. Whereas the KTM is 27 degrees, so it's a lot more stable. And you have a 21 inch front wheel and all those things. Now, Brandon really doesn't like sand, so he's probably cursing me already, but he's got, he's got a good bike for it. Typical Ian taking me in a bunch of sand. KTM fashion, the suspension is just absolutely unperturbed by rough surfaces, very compliant. Uh, my temperatures were running really cool, negative uh, 53 degrees Fahrenheit. So cool and temperatures nice and low there, negative 53 Fahrenheit. I still can't figure out um, 226 kPa rear tire pressure. I don't know what that is in PSI, like a thousand. I was telling Brandon, I feel like I feel like the Moto Marini is not a. It's pretty good, like a kind of more of a beginner bike in some ways, a little more friendly because it. It's lower to the ground, the seat height's a lot lower. It doesn't feel particularly heavy when you're out here riding it. Um, it feels kind of like a smaller bike than the 890. And the suspension is soft and really compliant, so it, it, it gives a nice comfortable ride. And you've also got, like here's the situation where, see I've got my rear brakes, my brakes all the way in and I just can't stop. The ergonomics are, um, they're okay. They're not great like for standing up, but they're okay. Uh, I don't have, I'm just, you know, you can tell I'm not riding like this deep sand here. I'm not riding with the confidence I would on, on the 890 for sure. But that's okay, you can kind of just stay seated. You know what it reminds me of is like a CB500X or like a bigger KLR or so, kind of something like that. You know, hitting rocks and stuff, the, it feels okay. Um, I think we just have to be conscious of the you know, of the lower ground clearance. You know, you've only got about six and a half inches of ground clearance. Plus you've got that, the engine and exhaust and everything's really exposed under there, really vulnerable. So this is a very easy road. It doesn't really have any big rocks or things sticking out because they just graded it. But if we were on a rougher trail, you'd really have to be very considerate about the bottom of that engine. So I'm trying to grab a thumbnail picture here. You know, this is how we do it. and. Uh, the trail back there in the background the clouds kind of pretty what are your first impressions of the 890 off-road i mean you kind of already know how these bikes are yeah, it feels very much like the 790 the suspension is just composed planted stable um really the bike far exceeds the rider's capability in this case well that's true of pretty much everybody who gets on an 890r it's such so much more capable than we are yeah the moto marini is very soft and and comfortable but you have to ride slow it's also very twitchy in the front end okay. because it has a 25 degree rake. The KTM's 27, smaller front wheel. Also, the tires aren't as good. So like when you hit sand, it feels really unstable, but you can ride around that. You just have to be more careful. You know, the nice thing about the KTM is with that fuel tank design and wearing all of its weight low, really does help with stability, especially in situations like that where you're in the sand. I've ridden a lot of other bikes and I think this is among the best for that kind of terrain. Yeah, I totally agree. The rougher terrain where you really have to kind of manage the bike through the bigger hits and bigger washouts and rocks and things. And that's where you just really have to, to keep your speed in check. If you don't need to ride fast, 
then this bike or a bike like this is okay. And that's what I've always said. It really just comes down to what kind of a rider are you? On the 890R, you know, I can charge through here at ridiculous speed, almost unsafe speed, because that suspension on that KTM and then ground clearance and everything just gives me the the ability to ride that thing like a big dirt bike in, in ways that you wouldn't think an adventure bike could do. But and you, you're not gonna do that on, on a bike like the Moto Marini or any of this bike's direct competitors. It's just a it's just a different experience and it's okay. You just have to understand what you're getting into, you know. Oh, this feels way different. I can already tell you the suspension is much less compliant. It just doesn't have the damping compression that uh, the KTM does. So you have to watch it. So without traction control and these tires, grip's not great going up the hills and the soft stuff. But I don't think it's any worse than most of these bikes in this class, like a V-Strom or a Versus. You just have to watch it on some of these little whoops and some of the ruts because you don't have near the suspension travel that you do on the KTM nor the ability to not bottom out <laughs> okay so jumping on my 890R it's uh it just it could not feel more different like the whole ergonomics and riding position is different the suspension it honestly feels like I could just fly through this at any speed I wanted and the suspension just absorbs these the trail like nothing like no other adventure bike does got the amazing electronics package so I can go like full throttle like that and the bike stays in line because of the traction control <laughs> It's hilarious, you know, how much faster I can ride this. But you know, this is a bike that, this demands more of you as a rider. It wants you to stand up and attack the terrain. It's just set up for that. You can, you can sit down and cruise slow, but it just doesn't quite feel like it wants to do that. It wants you to stand up and really get after it. And that's what the kind of rider that this is really designed for. <laughs> you! <laughs> hey! Yeah, you run out of suspension travel pretty fast on those deeper whoops actually run out of rear travel on compression sooner than you do with the front on this you can just tell how uh, superior the suspension on the KTM is that's where the money on that bike really went Bottomed it out. And then I have to be careful on some of these rockier sections as there's not a lot of ground clearance with this bike and the exhaust hangs down pretty low. I like this engine better in the lower speed dirt stuff than I do on the, the pavement. The things that make it boring on pavement make it very approachable in the dirt there's not really enough power here to get yourself in trouble 
and the power delivery is very smooth. Woo! Ian being an Ian and on that KTM, he's probably miles ahead. <laughs> Brandon does not like saying I was silty to be honest <laughs> he's flipping me off there all right off-road on the escape what do you think not terrible if you look at it in what I would consider its competitive set kind of V-Strom-ish, maybe, you know, on the lower end, CB500X, uh, what else, the Versa 650, it's, it's definitely not worse than those bikes, it's perfectly acceptable for roads like that, you could ride this on uh, forest roads all day long, wouldn't be a problem, and um, it's actually a lot better than my ancient V-Strom, uh, the build quality seems to be pretty decent, nothing rattles around, for the price, I think it's pretty good. Yeah, would you rather ride this off-road or your V-Strom 650 off-road? Oh, this, without why, a doubt. Why is that? The V-Strom just feels like it's kind of rattly and is going to shake apart. Um, this this just seems to have a better build quality. There's more compliance in the front suspension. That being said, as I remarked, there's a stark contrast between a KTM, especially an R-Spec like that, and the way the suspension works. The suspension really is the showpiece of well, that's like most a big dirt bike. KTMs. I mean, that's you, that's a dirt bike. You can tell that's where they put their money. Yeah, this I thought this was really easy to ride, really compliant, really pretty steady. And uh, yeah, I'd rather be on this than a V-Strom 650. Not a V-Strom 800, though, which you haven't ridden. And, and, but... and what I don't tend to like about this motor on road in that it's just not very exciting. It actually works very well off-road. The power yeah. delivery is soft in a very predictable way. You can grab fistfuls of throttle. You're not going to get yourself in any kind of trouble. And it has enough torque to carry you up the hills. Could maybe use traction control or a better tire or both if you really were going to ride off-road because it doesn't put the power down all that well when you're hitting like uh, whoops and, and bumps and things. The, uh, the rebound damping on the rear end makes it hop a little bit and lose traction. Yeah, I really I thought the front forks were pretty good. Yeah, really. the front's a lot better than the back on this bike. Yeah, the front's pretty good. The rear could be a little better. But yeah, it's totally different riding that to riding this. Dramatic. Did you, did you also notice that you feel like you're sitting up on top of that? Yes. And this you're gonna down inside of it. If anybody's ever ridden the Versa 650, I swear, if I didn't know better, I would swear. Well, because it's a Versa, it's it's the same frame design, it's, same chassis. It, it feels remarkably similar. But this is way better off road than the Versa's because of the 19 inch wheel and a better suspension. That's a good point. I hadn't. And this looks that. way better. And I, and I like that you have two little spoked rims and, and yeah. that hopefully don't leak like a KTM. Oh. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, well, now that we, we've done all the riding comparisons, you know, we've talked through the specs and features, let's have a real discussion about, you know, who are these bikes for and why does the KTM cost twice as much and is it worth it? I'm supposed to say something now. <laughs> well, that's a complicated question for me. I've had a day to think about this and there's quite a few things to like about this bike, but I'm struggling to see where it sort of fits within its own price bracket. Uh, full stop, if you like performance, if you intend to do a decent amount of off-roading and you can afford it, the KTM is my choice. Yeah, the way I see it is that the Moto Marini and bikes in that segment, you know, like a CB500X or a V-Strom 650, or kind of that eight to $10,000 adventure bike, they're pretty good for most people because you know you don't need a ton of power. You're not going to go crazy fast off road and fly through like a Dakar racer. Um, and they're good enough, you know, for a lot of people. And and it, it is it's half the price. And and truthfully, I'm super super impressed with the components and the overall performance and fit and finish and comfort and everything on this bike for for their first adventure motorcycle for a brand new essentially a brand new. A kind of company or revamping the name under a different ownership i'm super impressed by it like it it's it's i think it's nicer than a versus 
There was nothing glaring here that I could really pick out about it. The build quality felt good. Uh, the components felt good, particularly for the money. And look at it. It looks great. I know looks are subjective, but I think this is a great looking bike. And I'm not just saying compared to the KTM. Um, it rides nice. It's easy to ride. I feel like anybody could get on this bike and just ride it without any intimidation factor and get real comfortable on it real quickly. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what, were there any glaring downsides for you on the Moto Marini? Like anything that really stood out as negative? <sighs> if I'm really nitpicking, I wish it had a few more things like maybe traction control or some ride modes, mm -hmm. um, cruise control, that would be one. O honestly, for me, I, I'm, struggling with where it fits in its class as I started to think about bikes like the CB500X at $72.99 or the KLR650 ABS at $71.99, the Versa 650 at $88.99 or the V-Strom 650 XT at I think $95.99. It's kind of in the middle of all these bikes and I was trying to figure out last night you know, what would make me buy this bike over one of those? And it's, it's a really tough call. I think if they put cruise control on this bike and maybe a couple ride modes and electronics, and even if they kept the price under $10,000, this might be my choice. Hmm. I mean, I think it's pretty compelling because you're getting, you're getting better suspension than any of those bikes you mentioned. Uh, you're getting a good engine, you're getting good componentry, good brakes, you're getting tubeless wheels, which those bikes don't have. Um, you're getting a lot of stuff that people have always said they wanted, and it looks amazing in my opinion. It looks great. It looks super unique and amazing Italian design. Um, the fact that it's built in China, like it doesn't really personally bother me. I know it bothers some people and that's a personal choice, um, but that, that's really not a big factor for me. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think it's a really strong competitor, even against those bikes you mentioned. Um, it's, it's a lot for the money. But now, you know, why, why purchase a premium adventure bike? So a Tiger 900 Rally Pro is 17000 This is 16000 A Desert X is $17,000, $18,000. So who, who is the person that should spend twice as much to get a better bike? I think it's somebody that really cares about the performance aspect. I mean, you saw during the riding impressions when I switched over from the Xscape to the KTM, it was like a night and day difference instantly. Yeah. You feel that performance, it's tangible, it gets you excited. Um, this bike just makes me want to misbehave. And I think that's a big part of riding motorcycles is the emotional part, how it makes you feel. Yeah. Now. If you're somebody like my wife who owns a Versa 650, it's a fantastic bike. Nothing goes wrong with it. It's easy to maintain. It gets awesome mileage. This bike to me feels so much like a Versa 650, mm. except you have a couple more compelling things about it at a very similar price. If you're just mm. looking for a nice commuter, something that looks good, that I think honestly is going to have good reliability, we'll see in time. Um, want something comfortable, easy to ride, no fuss, no muss. This is a very good choice. You mentioned reliability. I think that's worth discussing. Um, if, if you, I mean, I'm not, and I'm not even, I'm not being sarcastic here. Like if you ask me which of these bikes you think will be more reliable, I honestly think the Moto Marini will because it's, it's a Kawasaki engine design, even though it's a CF Moto. CF motors have proven to be quite reliable. Um, the rest of the bike is super simple. There's not a lot to go wrong with it. Uh, and, and the KTM's, the 798.90 platform, for whatever reason, has a lot of bugs. Uh, they have engine issues, that you've got clutch issues, you've got fueling, start, issues. fueling issues, starting issues. Um, there's brake issues. I mean, th there's a whole list of things that, of bugs that these some of these coolant bikes leaks. have. Coolant leaks. I mean, they, you know, I'm not gonna get into all that, but they seem kind of, they need to work on that. They need to work on their quality control on, on, this, on this bike. I still own it because the performance is unlike anything else, and, and that's worth it to me. But if you just wanna put a lot of miles on, dude, I mean, get a V-Strom, get a Versus, get, get that, get, yeah. get, a, get a CB500X, get a, an Africa Twin. You know, a KTM is not for the high mileage rider who, who really needs to depend on it. It's for the performance-oriented rider who's maybe 
you know, staying closer to home, in, in my opinion. I, I know we're speculating here uh, about the potential reliability of this bike, yeah. but this is basically a brand new build and this bike has a hundred miles on it. And it just, to me, it felt like a Japanese bike in yeah, this class. It does. There was nothing about it that felt like it was low quality or it was gonna fall apart. Uh, you know, we've both owned several of these KTEM 890, 790 platform bikes, and we've yeah. both had issues with them. Yep. So to me... I mean, mine already has issues, and it has like 200 miles on it. So to so. me, that 30 dealers versus the, what, almost 400 for KTM is, is not a huge concern. Yeah. I, I think you're more likely to need that dealer support with the KTM, and hopefully that improves with time. And you get you get a three year warranty, unlimited miles on that. That's, that's crazy. Very that's impressive. that's like Royal Enfield kind of warranty. That's impressive. Um, yeah, KTM one year. They they give you one year because they know it, it it's probably you know. It's... That all being said, mixing that into the conversation and those other bikes I mentioned, I still think maybe my choice, but it's because I'm more of that safe, known entity kind of guy would probably go for the V-Strom 650 XT, mm -hmm. even in that extra $1,100, $1,200. And that's mainly because I'm getting traction control and a few other things in the electronics for it. If this bike had those same things, mm, I think this would be my choice. But we all know with the V-Strom, it's a known entity. Yeah, the, the V-Strom is, is a strong competitor to that. and. Um, now, if you had a couple extra thousand more, you could get the 800, which is an, a phenomenal bike in every way, the new 800 V-Strom. The 650 V-Strom is good, but it's kind of similar to this. Yeah. I, I like um, the V-Strom 650 motor a little bit better just for the character of the L-Twin. Yeah. H how about, while we're talking about spending a few thousand dollars more, you know, rather than going up to the super premium 16, 17,000 range of bikes, what is what about when we get into, say, 11 to 13,000 and what yeah. is a what is an Aprilia Touareg going for? Well, a Touareg is like 12 to 13,000 US and and that's a pretty compelling bike for the money. Um, yeah, yeah, that's really good. But if you're just mostly riding on the road, I don't I mean this is Oh, this is if good. if you're uh, not doing yeah. a, a bunch of off-roading or more than fire roads and and light duty. The Touareg is an off-road bike. You this, know? Is, this is a very good choice. Um, I but, do wonder what it's going to look like though as far as support in the aftermarket. You know, things you may be able to do to the suspension and protection in the future. They have a good uh, aftermarket accessory from the factory. What about a CB500X? I mean, it's it's a thousand dollars more than that and you do get about 10 to 15 more horsepower, which is a lot. Um, better suspension, better brakes, better, more features. But the Honda, you know, is like super solid. Um, I don't Gets know. great mileage too. I, I really like the CB500X. That was one of the more surprising bikes I rode in the past year as far as exceeding my expectations. But you know what? One of the big things for me here is the spoked wheels. Tubeless and, spokes. And, yeah. and like you mentioned, and for, it, for not much more money, you're gaining a good bit more power, a little bit more sophistication in the suspension, you're getting the better brakes. I would maybe pony up the extra money for this. And it's a little bit larger bike. It's a little bit more roomy, like a little bit larger frame and everything, so. Better choice for longer distance riding with the extra mm -hmm. CCs. So I guess to, to sum this up, I mean, I was super impressed by that Moto Marini. Like it's a bike I would buy, like if I was on a budget, and wanted something in that price range, I would buy one. Like I see nothing, I mean, this is not a long-term test. We don't know the long-term implications or reliability of it, obviously. But from initial impressions, I was super impressed with it. I'd buy it, I mean, it seems great to me. And I mean, I'm ha I, I, I have my KTM and I know why I have it, but I mean, any final thoughts? I just think if they, this is a great first effort and, and that's not a tongue in cheek statement. This is a very good bike particularly for the money. And if they continue to evolve it, maybe add a few more features, put a little bit more functionality in that big, nice TFT, give me some electronics and still keep that price under $10,000, geez, this could be the best thing going. And it looks great. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. 
Well, thank you all for watching. I hope this was an enjoyable and informative video. There are ways to support Big Rock Moto, and you can do that in the uh, video description below and the pinned comment below. And who knows, maybe if we get a few extra bucks, we'll even start to pay Brandon now and then <laughs> for his efforts. Uh, <laughs> so, other than working for slave wages. Um, well, thank you, Brandon. I got a water bottle. You got a water. <laughs> thank you for being part of this, and uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, ride safe, and we'll see you out there.